It's been one year since I had my pacemaker implanted, and today I'm going to talk to you about what's happened over the past year. Things have definitely changed for me over the last year. Immediately after surgery, I was really hyper-focused on um, what my heart was doing, and I had still had some chest discomfort from the surgery, the, the scar, um, the leads, and um, I had my arm in a sling. And when I was doing normal day-to-day -day activities, it would be noticeable. It would, it would bother me. I wasn't allowed to lift things heavier than a milk jug with my left arm, and it kind of impacted my day-to-day -day life. Not too bad. I talked about it a little bit um, in previous videos. But uh, when I went back for the wound check two weeks after surgery, they did a pacemaker interrogation, and at that point I was using the pacemaker 11% of the time out of the day, out of a 24-hour day, 11% of the time, and that was at night while I was sleeping. And it had an estimated 10 years of battery life left. So at that point I thought it was good, everything was going fine, but like I talked about in, a, in another video where I had pacemaker problems, and I really don't know if it was a problem or a tuning issue is really what they told me because I had pacemaker-induced tachycardia. So this first happened when my wife and I were at home watching Game of Thrones on DVD. <laughs> Somebody let me borrow. I wasn't into it until then. And all of a sudden I'm sitting there on the, the couch and my heart rate gets real rapid. And come to find out what happens was the pacemaker is getting into a feedback loop. Um, my nerve wasn't conducting um, quick enough for the programming, so when it would pace the, the bottom chamber, that current would go back up the nerve a little too slowly, and the top lead would detect that as a new heartbeat, and it would say, oh, um, it's time for, to pace the bottom chamber again, and it would pace. So it would be about 120 beats per minute. So I did have to go up to the cardiologist. I I moved up my, my next appointment uh, by a few weeks in order for them to, to take care of that. So they had to reprogram the pacemaker. And I also had a problem with the pacing when I was at rest sometimes. Even though it wasn't really put in to, to pace me during my waking hours, because I, I just have the problem with um, the AV no block really bad when I'm asleep, when I'm in the deepest sleep. Yeah, but sometimes during the day when I'm at rest, like when I'm driving or sitting, it would, it would pace me. Like I could feel it. It was a big, it was a pretty good chest thump when it would give me a dual chamber pace during the day. And that was because my heart rate was falling below the default limit, the heartbeat limit of 60 beats per minute. And for me in my situation, that was a little bit too high. So again, I had to go back a few months later and they tuned it down to where it won't pace me until I drop below 50 beats per minute now. So after the, for working those two problems out in the first few months, it's kind of been smooth, smooth sailing with the pacemaker since then. So as the months went on, things got back to normal in my life. I went back to work. I was off restrictions so I could move my arm. I could lift again. Um, I can work out. And I was actually out in the yard moving flagstones six months after I had the pacemaker surgery. And really, after a few months of things being normal and not having any restrictions put on me by the cardiologist, I sometimes even forget I have the pacemaker. So I've made several life changes since the surgery. Um, the first one is I've started focusing more on my cardiovascular health even though the pacemaker is an electrical problem I you know want to make sure that the circulation part of it uh, you know I don't get clogged arteries you know I've been kind of more focused on eating healthier and making sure I get the minimum amount of cardiovascular exercise in so each weekday I made a, a priority to go out and get about half an hour um, of walking in brisk walking and I've um, made a lot of other changes in my life since then. It, it, the surgery had an impact, and I probably have enough to fill another video, which I'll do in the future. 
Before I tell you about my one-year checkup, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing to my channel if you um, like the content and are interested in hearing about things that I have to say in the future. And while you're at it, if you could like the video, that would really help me out to know uh, what kind of content I should do in the future. And also, if you would like to comment about things you'd like me to do a future video on, please do that and I'll try to respond to you. So let's get to the one-year checkup. So when I went in for my one-year post-op checkup, they did the pacemaker interrogation again, and now I'm down to using it only about 3% out of a 24-hour period. And again, those are always about 2, 3 in the morning when I'm in my, my deepest sleep. And my estimated battery life is still 10 years. So even after a whole year of using it, when they first estimated me at, at 10, 10 years of battery life, I'm, I've used it so infrequently at night now that they've tuned it that I still have about 10 years of battery life remaining, which I think is a, is a good thing for me. But when he actually told me how infrequently I used it, that kind of um, made a, po a thought pop into my mind of, do I really actually need this if I'm using it so infrequently? And they assured me that the answer is yes. It's definitely not normal for my heart to be um, stopping or missing chamber beats. The, the lower chamber would skip a beat or, or just be very slow in responding when I'm in my deepest sleep. And he reassured me that it's absolutely necessary that I have the, the pacemaker for this situation. So thank you for watching today. And if uh, you do subscribe and hit the notification, um, because next time I release a video, I'm going to talk about my first time flying after the pacemaker, how going through security and TSA was, and about my whole experience traveling after the pacemaker. Subscribe now. Resistance is futile.